hi guys and welcome to my channel how are y'all doing today so today here on abby the witch in honor of Samhain, in honor of halloween i am actually going to be talking about some paranormal experiences as well as showing you some footage from me speaking with spirits in a cemetery very nearby my home this is actually in collaboration with Miss Mickey from the Spooky Baby Society. She has a really cool channel. She does paranormal story time, interviews people and what their paranormal experiences are. So we decided, since we live pretty far away from each other, we decided to collab separately and talk about our own experiences separately. And she had a great idea of going to a cemetery each of us going to like a local cemetery and doing some ghost hunting, some spirit communication. And of course I had thought that was like the coolest idea ever and I was so down for it. So I think what I'm gonna do first is I am going to talk about some of my own personal paranormal experiences and then I will show you the footage at the cemetery um, after. Now I will give you a heads up the footage of the cemetery is really cool, the small amount of footage that we did get. However, we were not able to stay for very long, unexpectedly, you'll see why. But the footage that we did get, the communication that we did get was really cool. It was really cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with um, the first part of this video though, and that's just my personal paranormal experiences that I've experienced. Now, a lot of you, maybe not a lot of you, I don't know, some of you have probably heard a lot of these experiences simply because you've listened to my live chats with other people from other YouTube channels. Definitely have been interviewed about these experiences or about paranormal experiences before. So I've already talked about most, if not all of these experiences briefly. Well, most of them, not all of them. Um, but yeah, if you wanna skip ahead, then go for it. I understand if you've already heard all of this. Okay guys, so I'm gonna start with my childhood and some spooky things that happened to me in my childhood home and things that I experienced that I just to this day cannot explain. Um, very bizarre experiences. The first experience I can think about was when I was very, very little. I have a memory of being in my crib actually. Like I remember exactly what my crib looked like. It was like a royal blue. It was blue blue. And I remember having my hands on the bars and looking through the bars and seeing something to that to this day, I cannot erase from my mind. I looked over at my vent, like the air conditioning vent on the ground and saw this ET looking figure coming out of my vent, um, looked very E.T. on the top, but at the bottom was misty, and it was coming up from the vent. It was brown, and it was floating there just looking at me. If it did say anything to me, I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember looking through the bars of my crib and seeing that. And you know when you're a kid and you see something like you're, you're still experiencing the world, right? So yes, things can be scary, but I don't really remember being so scared, but I remember being very, very confused. Like I had never seen anything like that before up until that point. Like I just, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you see someone in a wheelchair for the first time or like, it's very normal and it, a lot of people unfortunately have to deal with things like that but when the first time you see it out in public it's kind of like jarring you know it was kind of like that obviously in hindsight i think about it and i'm like wow that's terrifying if that happened to me now i would shit my pants but <laughs> when you're a little kid it's almost like what is that it was almost like yes i was scared but i was curious and i was confused and i just didn't know what it was you know some other things happened to me in that home growing up too. I always had experiences with things looking in my window. Um, now, I had older sisters, but I don't, they would play pranks on me, but never play pranks to scare me. Like they never would go that far. So I really don't think that this was them. <laughs> but 
late late at night I would just wake up and happen to look at my window and see someone looking in and then suddenly jump out of view um, I don't know what they looked like all I know is it was like a shadowy figure it was definitely like a figure though it was like a humanoid figure I don't know if it was human I don't know what it was um, it happened to me a couple of times living at my mom's house growing up figures looking into my window I also had nightmares too about things coming into my window <laughs> I call them nightmares because I was very scared in the dream however it could have just been the spirit trying to communicate with me but I do remember being very scared by that very scared by that because that happened to me later on when I that started happening to me later after the ET looking thing came out of my vents so I had already experienced some things and like watched some scary movies and like knew what scary things were you know what I mean so yeah it was scary those those were scary and those nightmares I had were really scary I remember like waking up yelling one time because I had a dream that something was coming into my window I said no 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 and I woke myself up screaming no but yeah lots of nightmares seeing people in my window dreaming of people coming in through my window ET figure I also not only saw people like looking in through windows but would like be in my living room as a kid and see like the reflection in the fireplace and see someone behind me looking at me and then dodging out of view once they realized I saw them that happened a couple of times just things watching me as a kid I also as I've mentioned before I'm very connected with animals growing up pets eventually unfortunately die and I would have dreams of I call them loved ones of our pets um, coming back to me and visiting me in my dreams one of our cats who was very very old he was like 20 years old he was such an old his name was butterscotch he was so sweet um, little orange tabby but anyway we had to put him down because he was just he just got so old and so sick and I remember having a dream of him being in our arms and we were holding him and he was sick and then he just like rose his head up and he looked like he was super young again and he jumped out of our arms and like ran through a meadow um, but I've had many dreams not many but I've had quite a few dreams of animals that have passed that have come back to visit me um, just to let me know that they're they're safe now they're okay you don't have to worry or mourn over me anymore like I'm good I'm happy you know okay so moving on I eventually when I was a little kid I, I this okay I feel like this happens with a lot of people that when you're a little kid you're very open and susceptible to spirit communication spirits come and visit you extraterrestrial come and visit you you're just more open to those things as I got older especially into my teenage years I was way more distracted by other things as teenagers tend to get distracted by I mean use your imagination you know you are a teenager so I wasn't quite as I feel that my third eye and just my heart and mind weren't as open as they were when I was a child it was kind of closed off for a while um, I also got a lot of deja vu's when I was a kid those kind of got put on pause once I was a teenager and into my early adult years so you know I, I went through college and everything moved out of the house but now that I'm an adult and I've past few years I've been tapping more into my spiritual side my third eye is opening now I'm starting to get those deja vu's again now I'm starting to get clear audio messages again now I'm starting to get spirit communication again um, I'm just more open and susceptible to it again that's why I believe it's happening but once we moved into this house that I'm in currently I started getting paranormal experiences I started experiencing things that I just couldn't explain so I'm not sure if it's me being more spiritual and open now or if it's the house being haunted or if it's both I think it might be both <laughs> but there's definitely shit that's gone down in this house not even kidding you so when we first moved in 
this was, we've been in this house for two years now. It started pretty much as soon as we moved in. The weird, unexplainable, I call them paranormal experiences that again, I just, anyway. So the first thing that happened was the first summer we moved in, again, right after we moved in, I was working at a doggy daycare at this point and I had just gotten home. I was relaxing and I hadn't even taken my work clothes off yet. And Quack wasn't home, my husband wasn't home. He was at the office, this was before COVID. He wasn't working from home. This, he was at his office, so I was the only one home. I was just sitting on my bed and I heard his office is like right behind our bedroom. And I heard voices coming from his office talking. It was a man and a woman. It was very muffled, but I could tell it was a serious discussion. I couldn't tell exactly what they were saying, but I could tell that they were almost arguing. Not arguing, but just having like a disagreement. It was a very um, serious conversation that they were having, and it was a man and a woman. And I was thinking, well, that's kind of bizarre. And I was thinking that, well, it's Quack's office, so he probably just left his computer on and the YouTube, <laughs> the YouTube, and YouTube is running, he just forgot to pause it. Um, so it's probably just a video that's auto playing, right? I get up, as soon as I touch the doorknob to open his office door, the voices stop like that. Like I almost felt, like I almost saw two people looking up and you know, it was like that sudden. I open the door, all of his computers are off. They're not even on, okay? All of his computers are off. So that really scared me, not gonna lie. That was the first paranormal experience I've ever had in this house. Um, and I was just like, okay. And I chalked it up to like, well, maybe it was two people outside walking by the house. You know, you try to like justify it so you're not as scared. <laughs> But it was very clear as day, like it was a man and a woman in his office. Like it wasn't coming from outside, it was coming from through the wall in his office. So yeah, first experience number one. The next experience actually happened to Quack. It's a big deal when Quack can't explain something because Quack is a huge skeptic. He is a very science fact, if I can see it and touch it and you can prove it with science, I believe it type of person. So when something happens that he's weirded out or creeped out by and he can't explain, like, you know it's valid. So he was actually, this was when he was home alone and I was at work at the time. And he said he was in the kitchen and all of a sudden the ice maker started going crazy. And ice started spewing out of our fridge, like out of the ice maker, all onto the floor. He said he ran over and the uh, button to push for the ice to come out was pushed down. Like someone was holding it down. Obviously he couldn't see, <laughs> but it was like someone was holding it down and he had to like pry it forward. And it was like, so it kept going back. Like someone was pushing it back and ice was going all over the floor, all over the floor. And suddenly he was just able to pop it forward. Like someone let go. And he, that was something that he was like, can't explain. <laughs> The next event that happened in this house happened to me, and I would have to say that this is probably the scariest paranormal experience that I've ever had. I feel even scarier than the weird ET thing at my mom's house. I was home alone, shocker, and Quack had gone out to, I think, get some dinner or something like that, and I just stayed home. And I was sitting on my couch, watching TV and in my living room and maybe I'll put a picture up here to explain kind of what it looks like but in my living room there's a wall separating the living room from the kitchen but there's like a old school like window cut out in the wall right so you can see like a glimpse through the wall into the kitchen like I said I was watching TV minding my own business <laughs> when I saw something it was dark, hmm, 
It creeps me out to even talk about it. This dark, shadowy figure, but it was clearly a man. It was kind of misty, like he almost had like a black mist around him. Walked past the window, the window cut out in our kitchen. And then I could see it still, I like turned, and I could see him still walking past the doorway and into the hallway. And I just saw it, as they walked into the hallway, I just saw it go and like diffuse into like a black mist and like turn into the blackness of the hallway because the lights were off in the hallway. And it tricked me so much that I thought Quack was home. I thought he was home. So I was like, Quack? I didn't hear anything, obviously. So I get up and I start walking to his office while, you know, the hallway lights are they're dark. His office lights are dark. There, there's no one in the office. So now I'm like freaking out, right? Like I, I go into the garage. His car, the car is still gone. He's not home. So I start crying because <laughs> I'm so scared. And it gives me goosebumps to talk about. Um, I got so scared. And I just went back into the living room and curled up into the fetal position on our chair. And I had goosebumps, chills from my head to my toes. Not even kidding you, especially up and down my spine. That was the scariest. I know that's a short story, but it, you guys, it was clear. It was like a solid black figure. Like it was, it was crazy. It almost looked like a person. It's hard to explain like what I saw. It's, it was a person, but it was like a dark mist was around them and over them. Um, yeah, it was really scary. Other things have happened in this house, such as um, lights coming on and off. Our, we have this thing called the Google Home. It's kind of like the Alexa. It's just like a smart device or whatever that you talk to and it can give you the weather and shit like that. The only way you can turn up the volume on it is if you tap it with two fingers. That thing has gone off, used to go off all the time. Um, doors opening and closing on their own. <laughs> Although I think that we used to have another roommate and I think something was maybe attached to her. Not anymore, I don't think, but um, because after she left, the doors stopped opening and closing. But yeah, doors would open and close voices, just all kinds of things that we just cannot explain. I eventually got so scared being in this house that I did, I can't remember if I did this for the paranormal, if I just did this, I can't remember, but I did a ritual outside in my backyard where I buried a house key and I can talk more about this ceremony if you guys are interested but I buried a house key into our property like underground and I just invited any benevolent energies any benevolent spirits spirit guides are more than welcome into this home whenever you want and negative energy negative spirits anything like that is not and not that I'm not saying that what was in this house was negative necessarily, but after I did that ceremony, all of the paranormal activity just stopped. It all stopped. So I don't know if maybe they aren't negative and they just wanted to let me know a couple of times that they're here and then they thought that was good enough. I don't know if the ritual actually, the ceremony I did actually did something and it was an evil or negative spirit that was in here and they left. I'm not really sure, but after I did that ritual, everything stopped. Before that ritual though, other things, I forgot to mention too, other things like, especially when I was in the bathroom, especially when I was in the bathroom, brushing my teeth or washing my face or something, or even in the shower, I would feel something this close to my face this close to my face to the point where, and it's not like, oh, I was spooked because I saw a scary movie and I, ooh, jumpy or something. Like I literally would feel the peach fuzz on my face stand up. 
Um, I have felt, I feel like I have felt people like tug my clothes before. I have felt people like go like this to my hair before on the couch. Things like that happened in my living room too, on my couch. Um, again, this was before I did the ritual. I've heard people like whisper into my ear in the bathroom, just really, yeah. But again, after I did that ritual, ceremony, whatever, spell, um, it all stopped. So now our home is super like neutral. I fill it with the energy that I want to fill it with. Um, I really feel like everything was banished or the spirits that were in here saw the light and left. I know this one isn't as scary. This next experience I want to talk about isn't as scary, but it's a really beautiful experience. And again, in honor of Samhain, um, I want to talk about it because Samhain is all about honoring your ancestors, honoring the dead, people, loved ones who have passed. So I really wanted to talk about this experience that I've been having. Growing up, my grandma and grandpa <laughs> lived on a farm out in the country here in indiana they lived in rural indiana and they were so obsessed with bluebirds bird watching in general but they loved bluebirds they had bluebird houses all over their property um i have so many memories of looking through binoculars and looking for bluebirds and we would get so excited when we saw one and I don't want anyone get, to get confused either. Some people think I'm just talking about blue jays when I talk about bluebirds. I'm not talking about blue jays. This is a bluebird. Look up Eastern bluebird, or maybe I'll put a picture up here. Eastern bluebird. They're really elusive. Um, you don't see them very often. You really don't. They love to live out in the country where it's more quiet and it's more like solitary. But anyway, growing up out in the country, we would see them get really excited. Bluebirds, right? As soon as I tapped into my spiritual side, and especially, now keep in mind, I've always loved bird watching. <laughs> I love bird watching. I love animals. I love identifying species. I love identifying bird species. I love it. My grandpa and my dad taught me very well. I know how to identify them. So it's not like I just wasn't paying attention and didn't notice a bluebird or something like that. As soon as I started tapping into my more spiritual side and started opening my third eye and my adult ears, and especially once I started doing ancestral work, I started seeing bluebirds. Now, keep in mind, I live here in the suburbs in Indiana where like, you don't really see bluebirds. <laughs> you, they don't like they don't like a lot of noise. Not that I live in the city or anything like that, but it's a suburb. It's there's people around, there's cars driving around, there's dogs barking. Like they don't they don't really usually like a busy area. I've seen a male bluebird and a female bluebird. I really truly think that it's my grandma and grandpa reincarnated into bluebirds. And I miss them so much and I feel as though it, I see them the most when I need an affirmation or I need encouragement or I need protection or spiritual guidance. They show up. And lots of times if I'm thinking, wow, I haven't seen the bluebirds in a while, they'll show up just to let me know that they're still here. They're still here. They're still guiding me. They're still protecting me. I really need to go find their grave. And then it happened just the other night where I started seeing bluebirds in my dreams now. And the first bluebird I saw in my dream, well, actually it's only happened once very recently. Um, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you know that I recently just had this crazy nightmare. It was like an apocalyptic type of nightmare. It was crazy. But in that nightmare, I saw a bluebird. I really think it's because they want to let me know that even in my scariest dreams, they're with me. Even in my nightmares, they're with me and I'm protected. Sorry. <laughs> Woo. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> 
before Samhain or maybe even on Samhain, I think I'm going to go. You'll see in the in cemetery footage, I tried to find their grave and I just, I, it was so dark and it was such a big cemetery. I couldn't find their grave. I couldn't remember where their grave was at. So I'm going to figure it out. I'm bound and determined. I'm going to talk to my dad. They're on my dad's side. And I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to go find them. Because they've visited me so many times, I should go visit them. Sorry. And I actually put makeup on today. I have to cry. I put makeup on. Anyway, guys. <laughs> those are my paranormal experiences that I've experienced. Like I said, I'm going to put up next here my necromancy experience, my spiritual communication, ghost hunting, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put that up next. It's really cool. I hope you enjoy it. If you've had a paranormal experiences and you want to use this tag or do a VR or whatever, I love to see what your paranormal experiences are. Love hearing things like that. Please, please feel free. Again, stay tuned for the cemetery footage. And until next time, guys, I hope you stay well. Enjoy. Hi, guys, and welcome to my channel. How are you all doing today? So here on Abby the Witch, today we are actually at a cemetery. Now, this is the specific cemetery that my grandma and grandpa are buried at in uh, honor of Sa and Samhain and honoring my ancestors. Um, we were here, we're kind of struggling with finding where they're buried, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and just start doing a ghost hunt and, uh, well, spirit communication. I don't know if it's a ghost hunt, but uh, we're here to try to talk to some spirits. Um, it's a really chilly, rainy evening, so it's very appropriate. And I uh, got my dowsing rods, got my crew here, and uh, ready to explore. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, spirits. We come in peace. We come with no disrespect. We are here just to communicate with you. You don't have to if you don't want to. We would love to communicate with you. Um, anyone who is willing is more than welcome to communicate with us. Um, if you could first start out by showing us which way to go with these dowsing rods, they're really easy to move. Just point them in the direction where you would like us to go. Holy shit, okay, we're going this way. <laughs> Going straight. All right, which way do we go now? Keep going straight. Okay. Okay, looks like we got led to the groves. Free, what are their names? I can't read it very well. Treva and Enos. 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 Hi. Okay, uh, Treva and Enos. It. Hey, there's a tractor down there. Oh, wow, there is. Farm, yeah, right? yeah that's, cool that's very true. Here. Yeah, he was a farmer. It's very true. Okay, Enos and Treva, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being, being willing to communicate with us tonight. Um, we're going to maybe ask you some yes and no questions if you're okay with that. Can you please show us which direction would be yes? You can cross them over, separate them. Okay, so that direction is yes. Can you please show us which direction, or can you sh or straighten them back out? Okay, which direction would be, what did I just say, yes or no? Yes first. Okay, thank you. Which direction would be no? 
Okay, just kept straight would be no. All right. Are you resting peacefully? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Okay, thank you for that. You can straighten them back out. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do you have any regrets from your life? No? That's good. Great. Um, are you in heaven right now? Cool. That's good. Okay, you can straighten them back out. Thank you so much for your communication. We really appreciate it. Do you know where the Jarrett's are? Uh, where are the Jarrett's, my family? Yes, for right. No, for left. Well, it looks like they're saying no. Because straight was no. Okay. Dang it. Okay, well, thank you, though. Um, did you live a long, healthy, happy life? Yes. Good. Thank you. That's awesome. You can straighten them back out. Oh, 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 they're trying. Okay, there we go. Are you guys married? A married couple? No. Okay. Treva and Enos. Were you guys twins or siblings? No? Let's see, what year did they die? 2001 and... 1982. 1982, wow. Hmm. 2004. Are you guys... They're two years apart in birth year. Were you guys family members at all? Okay, so you were family members. Maybe I misunderstood. That's okay. Do you have anything else you want to share? Yes, they have a lot they want to share. That was a very aggressive yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it is. I think it wants you to try, Ab. You want to try? Yeah. Okay, Miss Abby's going to try. All right. Oh. Yeah, I usually let them straighten out. Okay. Straighten out, if you will. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. So cool. Thank you so much. Hi. Have you ever talked to people out here before? I guess, um, show, oh. No can be straight and yes can be, let's go left. Hmm. No. Maybe that's why they're so excited because they've never talked to anyone before. <laughs> oh man, I just got a teardrop right, or not a teardrop, a <laughs> raindrop right in the middle. Like it went through my little thumb hole. Here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you guys happy? Mm. A little bit to the left. Okay. There we go. Slow yes. Alright. Hi. <laughs> Can you go back to the center? Wow. Yeah, they... Thank you so much. Yeah, this is really cool. Maybe ask... Like, should... Oh, huh? go, go ahead, I'm so sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, should we move on? I'm nervous these people are gonna yell at us. Oh no, it's whatever. We're not closed yet. Okay. This one is like... It is. I kind of, I feel like I want Scott to do it now. <laughs> Scott? You want to do it, Scott? Mm. He's also so reluctant. Like... It's okay. Um... I think they're just very eager to talk to someone. Yes. Hello. Straighten out. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll give it another shot. Do you know where Marilyn and Jackie and Jarrett are located? You can point in any direction with these. 
Or stay straight for now. Yeah. Not feeling out. All right. It's like I tried to do anything. <laughs> okay. No. Fair enough. You guys no. are resting in peace. <laughs> um. Straighten it out. I don't know. You want to straighten back out? Straighten out. If you could. Or, or maybe at once o'clock you're doing now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they like. They want to have everyone try it. Okay. Sure, maybe. that's proof enough. <laughs> Anybody else? You want to try, babe? Thank you for your assistance. Anybody else want to hear? Okay, goodbye. Hmm. All right, you ready, babe? Right. Yeah, sometimes it's human error. Oh, God. Sorry, I'm so nervous. It's okay. They're probably looking for a tombstone. All right, really. It looks like coming right at us. Yeah, seriously. What's the plan? <laughs> I'll stop recording for a second. Okay. Sorry! Hello! The cemetery is closed after dark. Oh. <laughs>